In our accelerated program tonight, I, another first, it's time for one of our favorite traditions, the student keynote speakers. After an extensive national competition, we're pleased to have with us this evening 2020's keynote scholarship recipient, Ms. Helen Buchanan, and 2021's keynote scholarship recipient, Yush Kadadi. You can learn more about each of these amazing students in your program. In addition to serving as tonight's keynote speakers, the Space Club has also provided both students a $10,000 scholarship to support their academic pursuits. Please help me in welcoming tonight's 2020 and 21 keynote speakers, Ms. Helen Buchanan, Mr. Yush Kadadi. Good evening. My name is Yush Kadadi. And my name is Helen Buchanan. Flashback to 107 days ago, I just met Helen for the first time over Zoom, where we were told that this year, we'd be giving the first joint speech at the dinner. And true story, Yush was talking to us while a hurricane was pouring down rain onto his house. That's dedication, folks. Anyways, I'm sitting here listening to the soundtrack of Halo Reach, staring at this blank Google Doc, wondering how in the world Helen and I are going to do this. Meanwhile, I was building IKEA furniture for my apartment at college. There, there's been a lot of things we didn't expect this year. For example, Kim left Kanye, y'all. I spent all of my sophomore year sitting in my room teaching my cats physics. My parents said they wouldn't read me bedtime stories anymore now that I'm in college. And I, a Berkeley student, had to put aside the age-old rivalry to stand up here with Yush, a student from Stanford. You know, Helen, one of my favorite movie quotes actually comes from the movie Ratatouille. Not everyone can become a great rocket scientist, but a great rocket scientist can come from anywhere. Actually, Yush, I think they were talking about chefs. But the moral of this story is that Yush and I are used to the unexpected, and our love for space, despite our unique origins, reminds us all of why we need to explore, learn, and teach the public about space. Is going to Mars hard? For sure. But is it impossible? No. We want to dispel the myth that space is inaccessible and that we'll need nothing short of magic to get us there. Everyone in this audience knows that our missions aren't powered by hand-wavy magic. They're powered by everyday, hard-working Americans with out-of-this-world visions, no pun intended. We all fell in love with space somewhere. My journey in the world of space started early. With two mechanical engineers as my parents, I was always surrounded with a contagious enthusiasm for space. They would find the coolest documentaries for my brother and I to watch and take us on road trips to see the natural beauty of this country. Through all of this, I was in rapture. The national parks were full of geologic history that I gobbled up, the moonrise made the long hikes worth it, and the documentaries glued me to my seat in wonder. Not to mention, I got to count the space documentaries as homework. When you were in school, did your homework include watching space TV? But once I got to high school, I got drawn into other hobbies. 4-H, beekeeping, sewing, dance, singing. Lastly, theatrical costume design. All great things, but not space. One of the great opportunities of my independent study high school was a flexible schedule that allowed me to take classes at my local community college for free. I started taking college classes in my sophomore year. On a lark, I did to take an astronomy geology class through the community college. That was the fateful class that turned me away from theatrical costume design back to space. The first day of class, I got there half an hour early found my seat, and waited expectantly while the other students trickled in. In walks my professor, wearing the coolest tie I have ever seen in my life. 
It was all black with the solar eclipse at the very end of it. The very first thing he said was that it was the one year anniversary of the August 2017 solar eclipse, which my family had gone to see. Professor Cardell then proceeded to show us his incredible pictures of the event. It was right then, at 8 a.m. in astronomy class, that it hit me. My professor had the exact same excitement that elementary school me had felt about space. The excitement and wonder that I had forgotten was still there, a little older perhaps and a little quieter, but it was there, a spark ready to be rekindled. In one wonderful semester-long class, I rediscovered every bit of love I had ever had for space. It was this class that drove me to apply to colleges for planetary science. I ended up getting into UC Berkeley and a fashion school for costume design. I had a tough choice. I agonized over this decision for months. I delved down inside myself, made pros and cons lists, talked to professionals in both fields, and researched career opportunities. I did everything but I was still unsure. So, Helen, what made you pick? Well, one week before the deadline, I realized I had been looking at my choice as an either or, instead of finding what they had in common. Costuming had given me skills that could be used in any field. Ad attention to detail, adaptability, problem solving, and patience. Choosing planetary science didn't mean I had to stop costuming. I could keep sewing as a hobby and use the skills I had learned to launch a career in space. So I decided to choose what I had loved and wanted for my whole life. I realized where my heart was, where I wanted to go, was up there. So just days before the deadline, I submitted my intent and joined the thousands of hopeful students going to UC Berkeley. So, Yash, how did you fall in love with space? Well, Helen, I wanted a couple of dates with space myself. A Neil deGrasse Tyson documentary here, a backyard stargazing expedition there. All right, I'll admit it. I've been in love with space since the beginning. But I decided to fully commit to space exploration back in the olden days of 2016, when I was still in middle school. <laughs> like many of my friends, I was obsessed with video games. My favorite video game was, and still is, Halo. I was mesmerized by Halo's 26th century science fiction setting. But between the space cruisers that could travel faster than light and the advanced AIs, I was fascinated by the energy shields, which could deflect bullets and alien plasma rounds. On a trip to Kennedy Space Center, I learned about the ionizing radiation in deep space that threatened astronauts and made deep space travel unsustainable. Could a halo force field deflect these charged particles, perhaps? I became tired of science fiction. I wanted to make science reality. So I decided to become the first 14-year-old to build a force field. Easier said than done, <laughs> of course. After banging my head around for a bit, I decided to contact experts at agencies like NASA, but I also wondered which PhDs are gonna wanna listen to some random 14-year-old kid, right? One day, I finally decided to just go for it. After weeks of persistent emails and voicemails to experts across the country, Dr. Carrie Lee, a NASA engineer, responded to my requests. And with his guidance, I was able to finish my project by building a fully functional shielding prototype that deflected radiation. After this amazing experience, I continued to talk with Dr. Lee. I'd become more interested in the solar storms that actually produced this radiation. Long story short, I packed my bags and moved to Houston for my sophomore year summer. Through several internships, I used machine learning and supercomputing to develop space weather forecasting technology, where similar to weather forecasting here on Earth, we could forecast the solar storms emitting this deadly radiation. At Johnson Space Center, I worked in Building 45, which was right next to Building 30, the Mission Control Center. Every tram tour stops by Building 30, and I'd always overhear tourists on the tram tours peppering their guides with questions. Where do you keep the aliens? Are they here? Can I see the aliens? Are they upstairs? 
I bring up this example just to illustrate a very, very simple point. An integral part of space exploration is also making sure that everybody understands what we're doing in space, why space exploration is so important, and how they can contribute to our mission. Education needs to be our instrument. Education is why Helen and I are here today. Helen and I, we want to be beacons to inspire all kids interested in space. We want to prove that through hard work, grit, and a relentless pursuit of knowledge, that space exploration will serve our country and push us into the future. I want to take a moment to thank our parents, teachers, and mentors, especially my mentor, Dr. Lee, who's in the audience right now. Over the years, I have come to realize exactly why building technology for space exploration has been so rewarding to me. As someone growing up with video games like Halo, I've always craved challenges, especially ones nobody else has found the solutions for. And space exploration is the single biggest challenge I've encountered, period. Helen and I, we see how unforgiving space is to missions, both successes and failures, but we are undeterred and more excited to explore the cosmos. We believe we will need every ounce of ingenuity, courage, and engineering for us to one day step on Mars. This thrill, awe, and even the slight danger of space exploration inspires us to get up and study harder, work smarter, and learn more every single day. In an alternate universe, I might have been studying theatrical costume design. And if I were better at Xbox, I might have been playing competitive Halo. But both Yash and I chose to dedicate our time to studying and furthering space exploration. We truly believe that space exploration can reveal solutions to problems our tiny blue dot faces. Thank you to everyone in the audience for sharing our enthusiasm for space and for laying the foundation for generations of explorers to come. Yash and I would like to end with the words of the great astrophysicist Carl Sagan, who famously said, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. We call on everyone in the audience to keep learning, keep inspiring, and most importantly, keep inspiring. Ad Astra. Thank you. Thank you, Helen and Yash. It's inspiring to witness the enthusiasm you each bring to your endeavors. You both have very bright futures ahead for you. With this, Helen, congratulations. Our future is bright.